Hey, how's it going, everyone? This is Petey Proud. Look at it. It's the preview for the game tomorrow between Arsenal versus Newcastle United. Half past 12 kickoff down at the Emirates Stadium, live on BT Sport as well. So us coming off the back of the 3-3 draw against Brentford at home at St. James's Park last Saturday. Our attacking uh, d- display was a lot more better. It really, really was. We were going forward a lot of the time. We were trying to create opportunities, and we managed to... Um, Score three goals as well against Brentford, which is really, really good to see. But our defence lets us down again with the goals we conceded. I mean, defensively switching off and Darlow as well. What was he doing for the goals as well? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. And if we sorted that side of a game out, we could have possibly got our first win last season against Brentford. But because we didn't sort that um, side of a game out, which is why we only came away with a point. Arsenal coming off the back of a 4-0 away defeat against Liverpool last Saturday at Anfield. Well battered there, the way they really, really were. Um, indeed, I mean, Liverpool's attack just showed what it could do and Arsenal just couldn't cope with it. They just really, really couldn't. So, it's a trip down at the Emirates tomorrow, down the capital city. And it is going to be a very challenging game, uh, I must say, because... Our record down at the Emirates is absolutely atrocious. It is. We haven't won there in the Premier League since 2010, since Andy Carroll scored that headed goal. And after that, it's been defeat after defeat after defeat. <laughs> that is why our record there is garbage. It really, really is massively. But hopefully, coaching staff and Eddie Howe have been looking at stuff after the Brentford game and thinking, right, this is where we need to improve to make sure we are ready for Arsenal uh, tomorrow massively uh, I, re- I think we could possibly get something from the game as well if we have been working st- uh, stuff on in training because I don't think Arsenal have really been that convincing uh, this season uh, I would say definitely they're sitting in p- fifth place but yeah I- I've looked at them this season and the performance wise, I don't think they've been brilliant. I think Ramsdale's kept them in games a lot of the time. He really, really has. There was a lot of uh, doubt uh, about him when he joined uh, Arsenal, but he's really started to prove them wrong and he's been pulling off some world class saves, uh, I must say. And he has been keeping Arsenal in the game um, as well. So that is why you could say Arsenal are probably sitting where they are in the table. I don't think Lacazette and Bamiyang have really been convinced in the season. It looks like they've been struggling for goals. But it's these two out of Arsenal's attacking force that I'm really concerned about because they have done very well this season. And that is Emil Smith-Rowe and Bakayo Saka. They've um, managed to score the goals, particularly Emil Smith-Rowe. He looks on fire at the moment for Arsenal. Bakayo Saka, when he's on the ball, he's very pacey. He could certainly create a chance and um, set up an opportunity as well. And he can also get some goals for himself um, as well. So that is the main tool I'm really, really concerned about. But it wouldn't surprise me if as well, if Lacazette and Aubameyang have an absolute field day as well because of our awful defence at the moment. So again, we hopefully have been working that on in training um, this week because it's been our downside. If we haven't... Don't sort that out. We will continue to concede goals left, right, and set up massively. But we have got some good news overall. And Eddie Howe is going to be in the dugout for the game tomorrow. And he will make sure he is telling those players what to do massively. And it, it is glad because he has returned a positive, I mean, a negative, sorry, a COVID test. So that is why he'll be available in the dugout. And the f- traveling fans going down there tomorrow will get right behind him massively. They really, really will um, indeed. In terms of injuries, we've still got Paul Dummett out with a, with a cough injury. Who's been really struggling with that cough injury? He really, really has, and he's been out for quite some time. He's been trying to see like a specialist to try and get it sorted, but I'm hearing he could be back uh, next month, which would be good to see. And uh, Dwight Gale has apparently reported a tight hamstring. It is another injury, but he's never played this season hardly. Dwight Gale has he? So, but again, you don't want that injury list to pile up. You just really, really don't. Uh, that is the thing. So, there you are. But going back to the game as well, it is a bit of an opportunity for us if we take the game at Arsenal work. 
on our Tuck and Weiss, how we did against Brentford um, last week because they can be got at. They really can be got at, but it's the defence we need to sharpen up massively. I think we need to make some changes in there um, as well. And in terms of the goalkeeper as well, yes, definitely. Because Darlo had an absolute stinker last week um, as well. So there you are. Right then, it is going to be predicted lineup time. I think formation, I will keep the 3-4-3. Three, three. I thought it did very well in terms of our attack, but it's the defence that needs to be worked on. If we make some changes and defensively, if we are ready, there's an opportunity to possibly get something out of the game massively. And we're here and Jason Tindall in his press conference has said they want to go in there to try and win this game or to try and get something out of the game, definitely, which is what you like to hear massively. So formation-wise, 3-4-3. Three, but I think I'm going to go with what I, I think Eddie Howe should go with for tomorrow. So here we are then. So start off and go Martin Dubravka. It's a no-brainer for me that our number one has to come back into the start lineup because of Darlow's awful performance against uh, Brentford last week. The way we conceded goals and now he's becoming utterly error-prone now, Darlow. And that is the thing. And Dubravka... He is number one for a reason, and he can, and he is our best goalkeeper at M as well. And he certainly will bollock our defence if it's not really doing the job it's supposed to do, because Darlow just does not do that. He just does not do that. So for me, Debravka is coming in for me. He has to come in tomorrow. It's a no-brainer. Now the three centre-backs. So first of all, I'm going to stick with Fabian Scher. And it was great to see him given an opportunity uh, last week. And I'm going to keep him in the side. Because Eddie Howe does like to see a ball-playing uh, defender as well. And Fabian Scher can do that. So I am going to keep him in the start lineup. Um, Next player in the centre-back roles, I actually am going to keep Jamal Lascelles in there. Because the reason for that is he is the captain. And I just don't think he is going to be dropped. That is the thing, but he needs to work on his defensive style of his game massively because it's been a bit of a letdown this season. It really, really has. He did score the goal against Brentford, but again, his performance throughout the rest of the game was just not convincing at all. And the last of the centre-backs, now this is where I would like to make a change in this side. Take out Kieran Clark, and I want to, I'm going to bring back into the side Federico Fernandez, Clark. Too slow to react to things now. I think he now he, he's the one that should be taken out for me. Let's get Federico Fernandez back in. Hopefully, the coaching staff and the manager have been having a word with him and thinking, right, let's get you back in for the game tomorrow against Arsenal. Because he can be very solid on his day, Federico Fernandez. So that is why I think he should be in the start lineup tomorrow for me. So I'm going to pick him in there because I think he needs to come in. Kieran Clark needs dropping massively, so there you are. Now, the wing-back positions. I'm actually going to make changes to these as well. So right-hand side, I'm going to go with Javier Manquillo because, again, he's more experienced in terms of his defending. And I would be worried if it was Jacob Murphy against Emil Smith-Rowe because Jacob Murphy, that's not been as great as... Um, as uh, Part of his playing as a wing back, his working on his defense, his, his uh, defensive uh, style of play. So that is why I'm going to go with Javier Manquillo to play on that right hand side of the wing backs um, tomorrow. Left uh, side of the wing backs, I'm going to go with Jamal Lewis. It is might seem a bit harsh on Richie, uh, I must say. But again, Richie's defensive style is not great as well. And him coming up against Bakayo Saka. It, oof, would really, really concern me as well, massively. So I'm going to give Jamal Lewis an opportunity. I think he deserves an opportunity for me. He's done well, very well with the Northern Ireland um, on international duty. Why not give him that opportunity now? And a lot of fans have been saying the same as well. Give him an opportunity. So that is why I'm going to go with Jamal Lewis to play at left wing back uh, tomorrow. So there you are. Now, set of midfield roles. So first of all, I'm going to go with John Joe Shelby. I'm going to stick with him. And I thought he did very well against Brentford uh, last week. He certainly did. Massive improvement from what I have been seeing. And again, the coaching staff have been working with him as well because they do see something in John Joe with what he can do in terms of his passing um, and things like that. So he stays in that 
midfield role for me. So Shelby to keep his role. And alongside him, I'm actually going to go with Isaac Hayden. I'm going to take Joe Willock out, actually. You know, Joe Willock is up again, is um, returning against his former club tomorrow. But did you see the game against Brentford last week? He was all over the place. It looks like he couldn't be bothered. I think you, I could tell by his body language. He did look like he could be bothered last week. And it was dreadful to watch. He had to be taken off, and rightly so. So that is why I'm going to put Isaac Hayden in that centre midfield role. And he can also try and do the job of trying to to, to protect uh, the defence as well. So there you are. And now the attacking three up front. So first of all, I'm going to go with Joe Linton. And he was superb against Bradford last week. He does not deserve to lose his place in the start lineup um, as well. And again, like with Shelby, the coaching staff are working with him as well. Not just in terms with the rest of the squad, but on a one-on-one -on -one basis um, as well, which is absolutely glad to see. And hopefully we'll see the Joe Linton that will have paid the money uh, for him, definitely. So, so he stays in that start lineup for me tomorrow, Joe Linton. Next player in that role, I'm going to go with ASM. And he just needs to work on not holding on the ball far too much. If he knows to make a pass, go for that pass. It can be frustrating when he holds on the ball far too long and then we've lost possession. And he loses it. So, if he knows to make that pass, just do it. But he is an important player for us and that's why he goes in that start lineup for me tomorrow. Definitely. And now the last of the attacking, it's going to be Callum Wilson. And there is a bit of concern because he is a booking away from a, a match suspension because he's sitting on, on four yellow cards as well. Also with Lascelles and uh, Richie as well. But we all know we need him in the squad for tomorrow massively because he's... Uh, He's one of our better players as well. And we need to make sure the service is good to him to make sure he takes, he gets an opportunity. Should have maybe took a couple or one of them last week against Brentford. Hopefully if we give him service, he might start to now get more goals there for us massively. So that is the predicted lineup uh, that I've gone with. Do you agree with what I think? Ed, do you think Eddie Howe should go with that? If you were to change some of it, let me know down as always, M and Y. Score prediction. As we know, the record down there is not very good um, as well. But again, if we've been working on stuff and training, our coaching staff, Jason Tindall's press conference says we'll want to go in and win the game. That's what we like to hear massively. And Arsenal, you, we, they can be good at it. They can be vulnerable at times. That is the thing. I'm going to say... This will be a 2-2 draw. I think we can, can possibly get a point out of the game and hopefully build on that and take that against Norwich and Burnley next week because them are the ones we should be looking to win. Those are the ones, it's a thing, and those are the must-win games there for us massively, definitely. So let me know, as always, in the comments section how we'll go in this game, your predicted lineup, and your score prediction will be tomorrow. I will be giving me quick thoughts um, after the game. Um, as well definitely and there'll be player ratings possibly most likely which will be the next day definitely or could be possibly be on the same day we'll just wait and see what i could do so but player ratings will definitely be coming so thank you for watching of course don't forget to give this video a like please drop your comments in as always and please if you haven't checked me out before please do hit that subscribe button I shall catch us all here. Take a can we get something tomorrow? Or is our garbage record down at the Emirates still going to continue?